Huh? <laughs> I was wrong about the Blue Lock U20 match. After making two videos telling everyone they're saving the budget, there's still hope, it's not over yet, I realized I was right. Did you see Nagi's goal? I practically jumped from my seat. They actually animated it. And not only that, the entire sequence leading up to the goal was spectacular. I can't believe I can actually utter these words, but that was peak. Even Rin's goal, they did spam some visual effects, yes, but look at the shot selection plus animation for it. Rin has Travella plus activated. The ball is actually animated instead of CGI too. This is way better than we've previously seen. Hold on, I'm jumping the gun. Yes, they still have been adapting a couple rough moments here and there, but it's clear 8-Bit doesn't completely hate us and made sure such a crucial scene was animated correctly. You know what? I'm tired of ripping on Blue Lock for its animation. Because if I'm being honest, the last three episodes so far have objectively been the best the whole season. And after seeing Nagi's goal last week and the animation this week, I have faith that the other character peaks that have not been adapted yet will get their time to shine. But let's start back from where 8-Bit really impressed me. Practically everything from episode 6 to kickoff was anime original. 8-Bit included so many great extra scenes to really build up the tension for the U20 game. From showing off the players waking up and prepping, to the stadium filling up and getting hyped, to even a little teaser for a character's backstory to come. The creative decisions in this episode was done fantastically. And this was needed even for the audience watching the episode. Because for the anime only fans, they've been hearing nothing but glaze for the Blue Lock U20 game. So having part of the episode focus on buildup even gave me a manga reader goosebumps. And then the walkout. 10 out of 10 job 8-bit. This is exactly what I asked for in my previous video. To capture everyone's attention back into Blue Lock, you're going to have to make sure the aura in the stadium can live up to what they drew in the manga. And in my opinion, it was way better. The music choice and camera angles kept it fresh. Look at Isagi. Him just hearing a full stadium roar for the first time really gets him psyched up. But of course, everything up to kickoff is where they bait you and we're back to PNG lock. Is what I thought originally. Then I saw Isagi pass the ball to Batra and watched him cook up a skill move like he's prime Neymar. I was impressed. He passed the ball right back to Isagi and boom. Aiku making himself known for what he does best, being a lockdown defender. But why did I see fans hating on this moment? Talking about some, why is the snake red? The manga color version was way better. Like, hello? First off, this scene was animated nicely. Second off, you're complaining over a color palette? Let's not be picky here. The choice for the color was not bad at all. Dare I say it was better. Anyway, back to the match at hand. I can't lie, last week's episode did have some pretty weak scenes, and I don't feel like ripping on it in this video like I already mentioned. But shit. I know they're showing off some of the characters on the Japanese U20 team, but it's exactly what we expected from the trailer. It was pretty disastrous. Like, why was I watching Nagi take back shots mid-match? But Hitoshi Sai set the pace for the match after IQ and his defense team passed him the ball by giving Sendo the chance to score with a beautiful wide open volley. And I don't care if this is storytelling or not, put me on that pitch, I'm scoring that 10 out of 10 times. Like, bro had Gagamaru in net. Someone who's literally never played goalie before and he missed. If I was the coach, I'd be fuming after watching that. The ball gets deflected to the corner of the field and Sai sprints after it. Shigiri calls out, look out for the cross. But Sai must have taken that personally because he took the shot from an impossible angle and made it. This shot must have given the old heads flashbacks from when Roberto Carlos did the same thing because this can be called nothing less than sensational. And surely enough, the crowd goes wild after watching such class from an incredible player. That goal had Isagi in a trance, but Rin tells him, don't worry, let me handle it from now on. As he straight up tries to replicate the exact same shot Sai took. And let's be honest, it's bad enough he's already little bro, trying to replicate your brother's shot and missing? Brother, Brother But this shot here started a chain reaction that led to peak. 
Gulag gets possession of the ball again in the box and shoots a banger just for IQ to perform some gymnastic ass save. Again, possession is back to Blue Lock with Otoya, and he takes the shot, but it's blocked with a header. The Japanese team is fighting like they're in the Champions League final with one second left on the clock. They are not letting anything go through. The ball gets cleared this time outside the box, but it's exactly where Nagi wants it. It's unrealistic goals like this that make Blue Lock oh so sweet. Nagi makes a graceful first touch to a lift tap spin mid-air volley turning shot nagi had to make sure he shit on those defenders and announced to japan who he was before shooting and scoring the blue lock bench had the same reaction as me when watching because this animation and sequence we all just watched was easily the best this season and the crowd's reaction made this moment 10 times better too so we gotta give props to the animators for doing such a good job for such an impactful scene like this which now brings us to this week's episode, as Nagi is still on the ground emoting on the Japan team after scoring a banger. But Rin wasn't too happy about not scoring that last goal, and straight after kickoff decides to clash with his big bro. And this was nothing less of a domination. Rin was playing keep up the whole time, and Sai wasn't even trying for real. Sai deadass told him, you'll always be little bro, and megged him effortlessly. Ego, go bench Rin for a bit, he's overheating. Any more of this abuse, and Sai might start calling him good boy. And W author, because he really does try to give everyone a significant moment throughout this match, or at least significant moment for the characters on the field, because we get to see a lot of the role players also attempt to get big moments during this match. Shigiri breaks through the defense and passes it to Karasu for a shot attempt on net, but Sai read the play and deflected the shot. Unfortunately for him, he deflected the shot right to little bro Rin. Aiku makes it in time to prevent Rin from scoring, but he doesn't realize how much of a monster Rin is. No hesitation, in the zone, no pressure at all from Rin, as he uses the outside of his right foot to get a beautiful cross into the net, taking the lead to 2-1 for Blue Lock. I don't know when Isagi thought he was buddy-buddy with Rin, but this move had me dying. But now that 5 minutes remain, the entire Japan team is awake and attempting an equalizer. But Blue Lock is parking the bus like it's Italy after scoring a goal. They will fight for their life to hold the lead until half. The Japanese U20 team is trying all sorts of moves, but Nico is clamping them down. With a second chance ball, it happens to land at Sai's feet. But Bachiro and Isagi are on him. Sai, unfazed, hits some move that even I don't know what it's called and got past both of them with ease. With a beautiful cross back to Sendo for a redemption chance, but Rin blocks the shot attempt. But again, it lands at Sai's feet. Right before shooting, he calls Rin low bro for a third time. I would have started throwing hands at this point, but honestly, when you have fame and skill like Sai, I understand why Rin is being such a good boy. Thankfully, Ryu pulls off one crazy save with his long limbs, and that's half. Blue Lock is now leading 2-1, and the crowd is going wild. But before they transition to the outro, they pan the camera to a certain player getting fired up on the bench. Now, next week's episode will all depend on the creative decision of the Blue Lock team. Either it will be halftime break plus a backstory, or halftime break plus the match will resume. It all depends on 8-bit. So I'll keep my expectations low, but not as low as I used to, because honestly, after watching these last three episodes, I'm telling you, this might be a turning point for the animation. I really do think now, after watching the first half of the U20 game, that it could be better, and I'm honestly kind of content with what we got so far. Anyway, if you guys made it to the end of the video, be sure to leave a like if you want to see more content like this, and subscribe to keep up with future content. Comment down below your thoughts on the U20 match so far. I will cover more Blue Lock and weekly episodes airing this season, so stay tuned for that. Expect a Bleach video next week for sure, I'll tell you guys that much. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.